the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire now then we are ambassadors for christ we are who as though god were pleading through through us we implore you on christ's behalf be reconciled to god ambassadors for christ the knowledge of who we are and what we ought to do in god is what positions our heart to obtain greater measures of grace in the spirit <clears throat> in other words once a believer grows in his understanding of who he is and what he has to do in the kingdom you must understand that salvation brings a responsibility on you in fact if you read the book of exodus god said to moses go and tell pharaoh let my people go that they may serve me the second time let my people go that they may worship me so we understand from scripture therefore that the purpose of their deliverance was to empower them for service god saved you for a reason you were not saved for yourself you were saved for him are you getting me we understand that we are created for god revelation 4 verse 11 he says we are created for his purpose and his pleasure Isaiah 43 verse 7 and 21. These are the people I have formed for my praise and to give me glory. Are you getting me now? So you need to know who you are and what you ought to do. There are people who are in the faith, they are Christians, but because they don't know who they are, what supposed not to happen to them is happening to them. Say in the name of Jesus, I will know who I am. The knowledge of our responsibility in Christ is what activates the experience of the benefits of salvation. There are things that I have to do. There are things that God will not do because I have to do them. And there are things that I cannot do because God has to do them. So I must know what God has to do and what I have to do. If you attain a church where they only teach you what god did and not what you should do you will never walk in the experience of salvation he said and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony the blood of the lamb is what god did the word of their testimony is what they do before there must be permanent victory against the devil there must be an investment from god and an investment from man there is something you must do there are people who have just left their life to any kind of wind and they feel like they just need to meet a prophet and the prophet will blow a magical air all the trouble will just fly there is no prophet like that matter of fact the assignment of a true prophet is to open the eyes of men to the things that god expects from them per time and season in their journey when a prophet comes it tells you that in this month this is what God wants us to do because such things are not in the Bible so the prophet by the anointing has access to the mind of God per time and season as a prophet comes your way he will open your eye to your responsibility towards God his kingdom and your community a prophecy that reveals what God expects from you is more profitable than the one that reveals what you expect from God. Because I already know what I expect from God. But the prophecy that comes to tell me that God says for the next three days fast. God says every Monday, pray. 
God says every Wednesday, be in worship. God says once a month, go to orphanage. It is this kind of prophecy that puts men in the place where they can experience quick intervention. I get what I'm saying now. So we have to understand. I need to know what God expects from me. It is that knowledge that helps me to know what I ought to do because truly in Leviticus 9 verse 6, what did Moses say to Aaron? These are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do and his glory will appear. Notice, for the glory to appear, there is something that Aaron must do. So, but somebody can say, but man of God, God is God. God is God. Why does God need me to do some things? Because God has given you something he does not have. What is that? Flesh and blood. When God created man, God gave man something that he, God is spirit. God gave man flesh and blood. And the human body is the only agency that gives any spirit a license to operate on any territory on the earth. So Satan requires the body of a man. Even God requires the body of a man. Both Satan and God required a body to be submitted to them for their program to be executed on earth. No matter the program the devil has, it cannot be executed on earth without somebody giving his body to him. And no matter the program that God has, no matter what God has orchestrated, there are things that God wants to do. The reason why they have not happened is because God is looking for a man. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, he said God had not sent rain on the earth because there was no man to walk the earth. Notice, God had not sent rain, which means there are things that God does only after he sees certain men. God needs a man. And I've gone through scripture. I'm, I want to explain to you why we are ambassadors. And I've realized that among the people that God looked for, they are three he mentioned. Number one, God is looking for worshippers. In John chapter 4 verse 24, Jesus said, The Father is seeking they that will worship in spirit and in truth. The first category of men that God is looking for are worshippers. Now, worshippers is not about just adoration. Adoration is the singing of songs. Worship means submitting to the will of God. In Genesis 22 verse 5, the first time that the word worship was mentioned in the Bible, it was Abraham that was going to God. There was no piano. There was no music. He was going to sacrifice Isaac and he called him worship. So who is a worshiper? A worshiper is the one who has submitted himself wholeheartedly for the execution of the will and purpose of God. A worshiper does not have a will. Once you become a true worshiper, you no longer operate by the desires of your flesh. A true worshiper cannot live in fornication again because your body has become submissive to the will of the Father. Barakaya. That all you do and all you are becomes submissive to the will of the Father because Allah bashing the clothes of Barataya. Because you understand that the body for the Lord and the Lord for the body. I get what I'm saying now. Once you become a true worshiper, you will no longer be giving to, the, to, to bitterness, to anger. You are, listen to me. It doesn't matter how you feel. If you are a worshiper, you submit to his will. So, adoration is not adoration is part of worship. But adoration is the easiest and weakest aspect of worship. Because everybody can sing. Not everybody can submit. Because that's what the Bible says. It says, submit your body as a living sacrifice, holy and blameless, for this is your acceptable worship. Uh -huh. How can submitting my body be worship? I submit my body so that the Lord can use my body for his will. And God is very careful of the kind of body he can use. When we enter that deep place of becoming worshippers, Jesus said, I have no will. He said, my meat is to do my father's will. That's a worshipper. My will is his will. One time Jesus fell, he said, no, father, thy will be done. 
That's a worshiper. It does not mean you don't have desire. It simply means that your desires are overwhelmed and swallowed by the desire, the purpose, and the will of God. So I submit myself. This is what I like to do, but because I am a worshiper, I do what he wants to do. God is looking for people who can submit themselves to his will. Number two, God is looking for intercessors. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. He said, I seek a man to stand the gap. I seek a man to stand the gap. Hmm. Today I've realized that in the church today, we are so caught up in praying for ourselves. He never said, God is not looking for prayer warriors. Intercessors are those who have given themselves to praying for the purpose of God to find expression in a territory on earth. It means an intercessor, his prayer point is not his needs. His prayer point is the burden of God. An intercessor, by fellowship, has access to the mind of God and begins to pray prayers that are consistent with what God wants. An intercessor cannot pray for marriage. But you find them praying for souls to be saved in a town. You find them praying for the church, for pastors. Oh, you don't get what I'm saying. Once you have a mother that is an intercessor, I can assure you, the destiny of the children is as secured. Because these people can move the hand of God into action. There are people whose prayer obtain quick intervention from God is the prayer of intercessors. Because these men, they have sacrificed their desire for God's will to happen. One of them was another prophetess. We have something like Nehemiah. Daniel, these are people that though they were in captivity, they still had time to pray for others. Joseph was in prison, yet he was interpreting the dream of other people. There are people, as they enter a problem, they become selfish and wicked. I'll give you say, I forget my own for chop. That's, that's not Christianity. Don't talk like that. I can be hungry and I have 500. I will need food. I can say give you 200. No, I don't get my own for chop. Are you, are you a non-believer? You cannot be a good intercessor if you are selfish with your hand. It's not possible. You, have, you, you are a giver. You give your time in prayer. And don't forget, you are not praying for what you want. An intercessor prays for God's purpose to find expression. It means an intercessor says, Father, souls must be safe in this town. An intercessor, when he's walking on the road, he can capture God's heart. God is saying the youths of Kumba are going astray. An intercessor will say, every Monday, I will pray and fast for the youths of the town. And as he begins to pray, God begins to show him vision about the youths. Listen to me. The easiest way to have access into the prophetic anointing is to carry the burden of God and execute it in prayer. You will start seeing things. Everybody see revelation about what they pray for. Number three, God is looking for spokesmen. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. He says, who shall go for us? Who shall go and tell these people what we say? Spokesmen. People who are not ashamed, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. These are men that are speaking for God. That are revealing the counsel of God. A spokesman is the one that has submitted his mouth as an agency for the revelation of Christ and the teaching of the gospel. That's what his mouth is for. His mouth is not to complain. A spokesman does not speak for himself. He speaks for another. His mouth has been submitted. A spokesman, spokeswoman does not complain. Does not curse. It's not easily triggered. It's humble. It's discreet. But their mouth has God's counsel. There are people, I tell you the truth. If they tell you that God said go and sleep, go and sleep. Because these are not the a spokesman who. There are people who claim, but they are not. Because once your mouth is given to immor immoral talking, coerced joking, God says this is why it's not serious. 
There's a kind of power God cannot put in your tongue because you will kill your wife. Because anything foolish, my God said this mug. Because at that dimension, what you say is what will happen. So God has to withdraw it. Are you get what I'm saying? So your mouth must be consecrated and submitted to the will of the Father. Are you getting me now? Now, these people I am talking about, these are those whom we are calling what? Ambassadors for Christ. So, God is in need. My question today is, are you accepting to become part of them? He will take care of me. He will never ever let me down. I surrender my life. Notice, I didn't say I give, I said I surrender. Because many have come to Christ. He has given them life and they took their life to do their own thing. You have to surrender it. Lord, here I am. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Oh, teach me from my heart to say, Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done Lord teach me from my heart to say Thy will be done Glory be to God He said we then are ambassadors We are worshippers We are intercessors We are spokesmen Who is an ambassador? I'm going to give you um, a diplomatic definition because the word ambassador is also diplomatic, alright? So it's not number one. Just it, it's not number one. An ambassador is an important official who is sent to a foreign country to represent the interest of his own which is another country. An ambassador is an important official who is sent to a foreign country to represent the interests of his own in brackets another country now this definition helps us understand something which i will not explain to you spiritually but this definition is what you will get in the dictionary or in school an ambassador is an important official who is sent to a foreign country to represent the interests of his own in brackets another country notice so therefore if a man says i am an ambassador you understand so there's an ambassador of america to cameroon he is not a cameroonian but he is in cameroon to represent the interests of what or just simple of his own country remove the another if it's confusing you to represent the interest of his own country that's okay are you with me now so he does not represent his interests he does not represent the interests of the country where he is he is in that country to defend to represent and what defend the interests of what his own country so he knows that i am in this country but my assignment here is to make sure that what is of my country should be established here that's why today in the whole world, in most nations, you have embassies of different nations there. Because it is through the ministry of the ambassador that that nation can expand to that territory. Before in Africa, we had what we call colonialism. Have you studied that in school? So, if you study how the French and the British began to act, German they may come and colonize the nation and they depart. But the French and the British, they began to put administrators in those nations. How do they call that in history? Hey, Jesus Christ. Huh? Direct rule. Indirect rule. Who did indirect rule here? Hey. <laughs> we don't know direct and indirect rule. Huh? 
Don't you know when they used to put what they call high commissioners? That's in history, right? So, the French nation, they came to Cameroon and they put a high commissioner. Now, the assignment of that high commissioner was to make sure that the culture of France is established in Cameroon. So, colonialism is not just taking over a territory. It's taking over the mindset of the people. Like a shudder. So there is something with their mindset. So now, notice now, I'm speaking English. The reason why I'm speaking English is because there was a British High Commissioner in Cameroon that had to establish the speaking of English language in a part of Cameroon. And all those who are of that part of Cameroon, where there was a British High Commissioner, we are called Anglophones. Notice, it's not the name that we chose. It is the name that was given to us by those who colonized us. So as an ambassador of God, you go to a place, you colonize them, and you give them a name. You know why? Because there's a law. Whoever names you, controls you. That's why, the reason why, don't be angry, oh. The reason why woman is under man is because it is man that names her woman. And the reason why man is under God because it is God that names him man. And Adam named animals. So it was a system of control. Are you getting me now? So now you find, okay, normally I should be speaking about Mungaka. Let me say this to you. Listen. Never ad ad accept any system that calls a man dull because he cannot speak a language. It's a wrong system. You cannot call me dull because I cannot speak English. English is not my language. I'm a Baliman. I should be speaking Mungaka. If you call me dull, then the British man is duller. He cannot speak Mungaka. Don't allow anybody in this world to use their cultural and national ethics to, to begin to measure you. How can me, a man born a, a, from, how can I be measured by my language? I am not an Englishman. For a British man, English is his dialect. So Africa began to lose its strength because foreign ethics, cultures, and mindset was imposed on them. Now I'm trying to show you how an ambassador works. So the, the, the responsibility of the administrators that this colonial mass has put in this was this. When they colonize a nation like Cameroon, let's say France colonizes Cameroon, they will send a high commissioner. His work in that nation is to make sure that number one, the culture of France is exported to Cameroon. Till today, the currency we use is still France CFA. Why not Cameroon CFA? So, I want to show you how this thing of ambassadors came. Are you getting me now? But now, in the kingdom of God, there's also a system called ambassadors. But our own is not like their own of the world. We are not coming to oppress a territory and kill them. No. We are coming to bring them the good tidings of heaven. Glory be to God. Say, I'm an ambassador. <laughs> Let me give you three facts about ambassadors for Christ. Number one, we are ambassadors of the kingdom. Some say ambassadors of the kingdom. John 15 verse 19, Jesus said, you are in the world, you are not of the world. Number one, we are ambassadors of, some say of, not for of the kingdom are you listening to me now three facts number one we are ambassadors of the kingdom this means you must understand that i am not of this world i am of another kingdom there are people who don't have this understanding and the nation where they were sent as ambassadors have followed them you are not of that nation you are of the kingdom so the first thing you must keep in mind is that you are an ambassador of the kingdom. So three facts about ambassadors. Number one, we are ambassadors eh? of, of the world. Number two, we are ambassadors to the world. Now you see where two comes in. Mark 16, 15 and John 17, 18. Go into all the world, into all the world. 
and then John 17 18 so we are ambassadors to the world glory be to God you are not ambassadors to the church you are ambassadors and that is what if all your Christianity is about coming to church you have failed you have failed you know one time I met a sister <laughs> Uh, and <laughs> so I was so much. She said, "Ah, sorry, oh." So she said, "Sorry, she could not come there because she did not have her church cloth." What is church cloth? It means there's a kind of dress she wear normally. He said, "Prophet, I heard you came for Christmas. I could not come because that's a daughter of the church, oh. Sorry, I do not. I do not travel with my church dresses." Which one is church dress? If you have church dress, it's a sign you are not a true ambassador. The same dress you cannot appear in the house of God with is the same dress you should not appear in any party with. Because you are not an ambassador to the church. In fact, I prefer you come to church with short skirts so we know you for who you are. Yes. And go to a party with a kaba than to come to church with a kaba. And go, because it, the most important place where you have to show who you are is in the world. That's where they need your light. Don't come to church and act all humble. You dress well and you and the, tomorrow we see. No. You are an ambassador to the world of the kingdom but to the world. Which means your territory of assignment is where? The world. Not the church. We live in town where everybody <laughs> is fighting for microphone in church. Since I don't dare here, I never preach. No, you are an ambassador to the world. That place where you are selling, that's your embassy. So, and don't forget, you are not an ambassador to, which means, my service, I check my church clothes. Which one is church clothes? They don't check a dress which is well covered. Party. They say, hmm, wait. Now they come. They're going to open their back. Move, I say, I will show them how they come. My sister, you are an ambassador too. That party is an opportunity to show them how to dress. Allah Bashaye. Number three, we are ambassadors for Christ. Which means we represent him, not ambassadors for the pastor. For Christ. Are you getting me now? Second Corinthians 5:20. Anywhere we go, the purposes of our life is to reflect Christ that through us they may know him hey, listen to me now we are ambassadors for Christ so number one ambassador of the kingdom number two sent to the world number three ambassadors for Christ which means you are Christ's system to show himself to people Say I'm an ambassador for Christ. Why, do, please? Why don't you have confidence in yourself? You know some people that they like everybody except themselves. Don't be like that. So hi, see Prophet Kevin. Hi, see Prophet Kevin. Now you leave me. See yourself. You are as important to God as me. The reason why maybe I appear to have an, more influence is because I am in my assignment. You are an ambassador. Christ says, I sent you. So now, let's define it scripturally. Who are ambassadors for Christ? Number one, they are the representatives of Christ. Shout amen to that. Amen. Romans 8, 29 to 30. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be <coughs> stop to be conformed to what image which means God says I want you to become like Christ so you can represent him number one an ambassador for Christ they are who their representative or who is number one he, he is a is better he is a representative of Christ which means Everywhere you go, when people see you, they ought to see him. In John chapter 14, verse 7 to 9, Jesus said, Philip, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. 
an ambassador must so represent Christ that when people see you, they know they have seen him perfectly. That's how we walk in love. Say, I don't vex. I don't go forgive you. You're not a good representative. If Christ forgive, forgive. Bible says in 1 Peter 3 verse 1, it says, wife, conduct yourself in such a way that if your husband does not believe the gospel, he will believe because of your character. When your character represents Christ accurately, you convert men without preaching to them. You are representative. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Where there is war, we bring peace. Where there is hatred, we bring love. Where there is sorrow, we bring joy. We don't, our life makes men know Christ. Our life is a sign that points men to God. So when people see us coming, say, look at, since I met this man, I have known the love of God. You know, people are saying, I don't know, I'm, I'm in church. Listen to me, forget I am in church. Are you in Christ? How do we know your character? What is your character? Are you representing Christ? Hmm. I get what I'm saying. What is not good for Christ is not good for you. There is a life you must live because you represent him. There are things we cannot do. I cannot do them. Doesn't matter how I feel. Because there is somebody whose only way of knowing Jesus is looking at me. So at every moment of my life, I must appear with the accurate image of reflecting Christ to men, not myself. So I must, my desires must go down. My will must go down to I come to the place. I am not, but gradually, the more you yield yourself to the Holy Ghost, the more you are perfected to the image. When people see you, they must know love. They must know peace. They must know kindness. There are many wives whose husbands cannot follow them to church. Because though they are in departments at home, there are fierce tigers. They can use their mouth and devour the man's life. Such a man will not believe that you have known Christ. There are women that have even married pastors and don't believe that he's called. Because the man can preach on the altar and be an angel, but at home, he's a lion. An oppressive dictator is his way or death. No, humble yourself. He said, learn from me. Be like me. Be like Christ. Do he love? We love. Number two, an ambassador for Christ is a messenger of Christ. Second Corinthians 5.20 He says, we are talking on Christ's behalf. Not on our behalf. Saying to the world, be reconciled to Christ. So, an ambassador, everywhere he, for Christ, anywhere he goes, he tells men about Jesus. You know, there are people who are in church, when you check their life, there is nothing about them that reflects Christ. Social media, oh, you don't see it. If I go to your Facebook page, I must see Jesus there. On your status, Jesus. But there are people you can never say anything about Christ. They can post everything except Bible verse. Just sit down. You look at the morning. I put there. Good morning, my lovelies. Hmm. Can't you look for a verse and put there? Why is your life not making people know Jesus? You are a message, which means you are a publisher of Christ. You must not be a preacher just telling that Jesus loves you. What will it cost you to just say somebody Jesus loves you? Don't worry, Jesus is faithful. And bring them to church for them to encounter God. Are you getting what I'm saying? You are a messenger. What are the things you are saying? So my life, my social, everything about me must show to the world. Christ because I am who? an ambassador so when you come and check my social media app whatever you see there Jesus loves you post things about Jesus uh, Jesus Jesus today Jesus tomorrow Jesus only Jesus Christ because you are his messenger if you are afraid to offend people you cannot have impact on the way of impact some people may be offended unconsciously 
because you are standing for Christ and his position. You are a messenger. So you have come to my house and say, no, and they've written it. Sorry, oh, for you, they watch national television. Sorry. You don't like them. Okay, you don't like them. Okay, I'm going to change them. Celebration TV. <laughs> you don't like them. Pop a minor TV. Out! Out! You go choose one. You must watch one. <laughs> Listen, when people know you as a person of principles, they adjust themselves before you come. They know that you will not like it. Number three, an ambassador for Christ is the battle axe of the Lord. Show me Jeremiah 51 verse 20. Said the battle axe of the Lord. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. For with you, I will break the nation in pieces. With you, I will destroy the kingdom. You are my ay, 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 ay. So God is saying, there's something I want to break in your family. I need an ambassador. You are my. There are dimensions of deliverance that a territory cannot experience unto a prophet arises from there. You are my battle axe. The deliverance of your family delayed not because God's hand was short, but because a man was upset. When you arise, your family get delivered. You are my. But in other words, I cannot do without you. Friend, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. oh my God. Wherever God sees a problem, he sends his, uh, his ambassador there. He said, go and solve that crisis in that family. So, do you know why you enter that family? Because you are God's battle axe. So, that spirit of untimely death in that family cannot stop you. You came to stop it. And you get what I'm saying? You came to stop that poverty. You came to stop that cancer. We are the stoppers of God. We are sent to say, stop. Bible says the whole world lies in wickedness. First John 5, 19. But Christ ambassadors for Christ are the system through which God destroys the wickedness of Satan in the world. You may not help the whole world. You can help one person. You are his battle axe. That's why I don't know who you are, but let me say this to you. You must have money. Because if you don't have money, how do you fight poverty? <laughs> Friend, where we are, we need money by force. If you are looking for money for yourself, you are a disgrace to God. We are looking for money because they are orphans to feed. They are widows to give them shelter. We are his battle axe. We are his battle axe. When people are sick, God says, Prophet Kevin, go and lay hand there. God knows that if he sends me, you will have a testimony come back to him. Are you not hearing testimonies? You hear somebody here? Five, five brought. Five. One encounter with an ambassador by the power of my kingdom, Fabra Bar. God punish the devil. Friend, I beg you when you pray, when you pray, pray for money. Ask God to bless you. Because if you are not blessed, you will be helpless. I'm telling you, poverty makes a man helpless before problem. We are, we are God's battle acts. We fight poverty. We fight sickness. We fight sin. We fight wickedness. Satan will not take over you. And, come on. At times we are, I'm praying. I'm praying. Let's go, come. Uh, Daddy, pray for, pray for my mother. They say, and I woke up. I said, your mother cannot die. I am his battle axe. There are many people here who will have died if we did not stand. But because we are God's battle axe, some things cannot happen. Rise up, brethren. Rise up. If you are doing business, commit yourself because that your business can be the sustainers of a, a village. Don't live for yourself. We are, so when you are a battle axe, understand it means you are what God uses to fight his wars. In God's war, he said, you are my battle axe, my weapon of war. God's weapon of war is not things, it's men. Men fight with things. God fights with men. So when there is a battle in Kumba, God cannot fight the demons here unless he raises ambassadors here and sends them. And hear me. When you are a weapon of war, listen to what I'm going to say. Understand there is war. Listen to me. Pray, oh. What did I say? Friend. Because our enemy is wicked. Pray.
prayerlessness is a sign that you are underestimating the strength of the wickedness of Satan. You don't know who you are playing with. Satan passed in Job's house, 10 children died in one day. He passed and passed. And he still came the next week with a different plan to make him sick. We, are, we, are, we have an enemy that has no pity, no mercy. Satan cannot say, ah, the beginning of a suffer and a lie. Satan follows you to the end. The only thing that stops wickedness is deliverance or death. Either you die, and if you die in the problem, it continues to your children. So we need deliverance by force. We have a wicked... Listen, don't sleep. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. Pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Pray. 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 Because who is after you is wicked. Wicked. Show me Luke 11, 21, 22. When a strong man, fully armed, guard his own house, his own palace, his goods are in peace. Next verse. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Now everybody look at me. Have you seen a mystery there? Have you seen a mystery there? Have you seen it? Let me show you. Look at me, look at me. Focus on this. Before he touched the goods, he said he took his armor in which he trusted. They will come after your prayer life first. He said when a strong man, fully armed, notice, he is strong, but he needs to be armed. Keeps his house, he will be in peace. He said when a stronger man comes, he said the first thing he does is he takes his armor in which he trusted and then he will take his goods. Your armor is your prayer life. Your armor is your prophetic covering. When the devil comes after you, and he monitors your life and he sees that you are under a grace covering you. The first thing you will do is to separate you from that grace. Then he will kill you. He must make sure you hear things about the covering that makes you offended. Once he knows that your strength is prayer, you will come after your prayer life. If your strength is giving, you will come after your giving. That is why never stop doing what is good no matter the kind of reaction you get. When the devil knows that you are a giver, he will make you to give to people that will insult you after. Don't stop giving because giving is your armor. Once you stop giving, it will destroy you. Are you get what I'm saying? Give all. Oh, all oh man, they give for you, they, they crush me after. Now Satan, he wants to take away your armor. Some people, their own armor. In fact, every believer has a grace they are under. Satan will come and say, Forget that pastor thing. Say, oh man, they forget this thing. You begin to have ideas in your heart against your, your father in the Lord, your prophet. When these ideas come, Satan is trying to take away your armor so that he can spoil your goods. He must take away your armor first. What do you do? Always be very smart. When there is an attack on a good thing you are doing, Satan has come after you. You cannot pray again. Be careful, though. Don't, you, you cannot manage oh, Satan is wicked Satan is nev he's never tired he can never give up so you must go back to the place of prayer to the place of sacrifice if you started giving to orphans don't stop say I don't the game not in the half of my life the game oh, no stop oh. sometimes you give the reward of your giving it's not God giving you something. It's God taking away something from your life. There was debt planned for you this year. As you gave, God removed the debt. You did not see your business increase. But God said, because you gave, you will not die. Understand that this thing works. Remain with your armor. If you are, give. Let nobody give. Give to widows. Be giving. I don't care their reaction. What I'm doing is what God commanded me to do. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, how does God equip his ambassadors the equipping or do you know what equipping means training right to be properly equipped as an ambassador number one you must know Christ someone say know Christ John 17 verse 3 he said that they may know you the only true God and Christ whom you have sent so number one 
to be equipped as or to be properly equipped equipments of an ambassador number one knowing the knowledge of what of christ friend you cannot represent someone you don't know the first thing you need to be a good ambassador is what eh? have a knowledge of christ and the knowledge of Christ can only be gotten by intimacy in the place of prayer. If you don't pray, you will not know him. He said, as we look, we are being transformed into the same image. There are people who read Bible and they don't know Jesus because he's not there. Bible is only the door. It takes prayer. You must have an active prayer life to know Jesus Christ. You get what I'm saying? Someone say knowing Christ, knowledge of Christ. So, the very first equipment a, an ambassador needs is what? Knowledge of Christ. Number two, the knowledge of the scripture. Matthew 22 verse 29. He says you are in error because you know not the scripture. And 2 Timothy 3 verse 15 to 16. The scripture is the constitution of the kingdom. If you don't know the scripture... You will not know what to defend when you go out for your mission. Are you hearing me? No scriptures. Matthew 22, 29 and 2 Timothy 3 verse 15 to 16. So number one, an ambassador must know who? Christ. Number two, you must know what? The scripture. For example, if somebody insults me, how does the constitution say I should respond? You understand now? That's how I respond. If you don't know the constitution, that is why in all ambassadors, all diplomats are first trained to know the law of their nation. First. Know what your nation stands for. So when you go, you know what you are defending there. Number three, the knowledge of the power of God. Hallelujah. Matthew 22, 20, 29 still and 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 to 5. The third thing you know, you need to know is what? The power of God. If you don't know the power of God, then the devil will swallow you. Someone say power. Shout it loud. Shout it loud. Which means as an ambassador, you must be able to command the supernatural. Shout glory to that. Say know the power of God. Say, not the power of God. And do you know, the only way to know the power of God is by fasting. If you are not given to consistent fasting, you will never know power. When you separate yourself from food, to give yourself to prayer and the word, you will know what? Power. But if you pray every day with that fasting, you will know Christ. He will reveal himself to you. If you study scripture, you will know scripture. So, a man needs to know what? Christ, number two. Number three. Why should you know the scripture? Because it's what? The constitution. Amen. So, let me give you three dimensions of our work as ambassadors. Are you ready for this? Number one. We are the light of the world. Shout amen. amen. Three dimensions of our work as ambassadors for Christ. Number one, we are the light of the world. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. What does this mean? It simply means we are the one that gives the world direction. Amen. So, we are the one to teach the world how to talk, how to dress, how to respond. Say, I'm the light of the world. One more time again. Say the world is not my light. I am the lights of the world. So, although the world is in darkness, an ambassador is the light. Which means, if I enter a community, by my presence, I will show them how to live for Christ. I am the light. A light gives what? Visibility. So, it doesn't matter how thick darkness is. One touch can give direction. True or false? So, number one. You are what? So anywhere you go from today, never forget, you are? 
You are the likes of that place. You give them direction. You are an example. That's why every, this, every Christian should strive to be excellent. You cannot be the light where you are not excellent. Believers should not fail exam. They have to be, because you are showing them something superior. So you understand excellence. There is a way you dress. There is a way you talk. Excellence makes you attractive. People like to look like those who are excellent. Be excellent because grace works better when skills are perfected. I prophesy. Receive the spirit of excellence. Do you know that nobody can want to be like a failure? Nobody. So in as much as we don't go after the things of the world, we need them to validate that we have a superior wisdom. Number two, we are the salt of the earth. Say amen to that. Amen. Matthew 5, um, I believe 13. Yes, 13. It says you are the salt of the earth. Amen. Do you know what this one means? It means you are the preservative factor of the place. Someone say I'm the salt. The Bible says in Genesis 18 verse 26. It says, and God said, if I see 50 righteous men in Sodom, I will not destroy it because of them for their sake. Say, I'm the salt. That means you are the one that should make intercession for a family. Because you are in that family, nobody should die again. Say amen to that. I said, no, didn't they happen? No, Prophet Helen, we know you are an ambassador. Stop it. So look at how you pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Look at me praying now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, because I'm part of this house, this spell of untimely death, stop. For my sake, it will stop. Ambassadors don't look for who to help them. They look for who to help. No, say, I don't know how to go do. I don't know how to go do. You be ambassador, stand. When people are confused, say, don't worry. Because I'm in this bus, we cannot have accident. You are the one to give men a shot. You don't bat. Hey. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> say, I'm the salt. Now, in terms of salt, it means what? Someone say preservative. You are the preservative element of a place. You don't preserve only spiritually. You preserve good character. When everyone is going wrong, you stand for righteousness. You are the salt. Because of you, righteousness stays in the nation. And number three, we are the yeast of the system. Someone say yeast. Those who bake flour understand already. Matthew 13, 33. You know what yeast does? It takes over. It means what? We are the one bringing influence in the world. Matthew 13, 33. Say, I'm the yeast. I'm the yeast. Now, what are you using your influence to do? You take over. Bring an influence. Because of you, let some people stop wearing short skirts and begin to dress well. Be an influence. You may not tell them, but just by dressing well, I mean dressing neat and looking sweet. Not dressing neat and looking one kind. Understand that the way you appear will determine the way they will address you. As yeast, I bring influence. The way we talk, the way we act. There are people that will stop talking the way they talk to now follow the way I talk because I am what? I am yeast. The world does not overtake me. I overtake the world. So, I am yeast because by the character of righteousness, I turn my environment to a righteous environment. When you enter a compound, because of you, the character should change. Because you are what? You are yeast. Because when you are light, you can show them the way and they don't walk there. When you are sought, you can preserve them and they don't change. But when you are yeast, they change. So yeast is the highest dimension of your work as an ambassador. When by your presence, people change. My sister, influence your husband into the church. Whatever you can do to save your husband, do it. God will stand with you. Don't keep your mouth shut. I'm an influence. Influence your children into righteousness. When you are you have your house. If your cousins enter your house, let them know this house, you don't dress like that. People cannot leave the village, enter your house, and instead enter your house and remain the same way they are before they came. And they live worse. Your house is not an embassy. If your house were an embassy, as they enter your house in two months, we see a change in the way they dress, in the way they talk, because the yeast is taking over the flower. Amen. 
you know and at the end you will not see what is the yeast what is the flour because the yeast and the flour become one you, so you think change them and they become like Christ there are people who were saved without us preaching to them who were just yeast glory be to God what is the attitude of a good ambassador number one you must be faithful Thomas say faithfulness Proverbs 13 17 he says a faithful ambassador is held someone say faithful to be faithful means do what you are asked to do don't do what you want to do I get what I'm saying now someone say I must be faithful to Jesus say faithfulness you know faithfulness I am tired but I must still pray for the nation because I am called to pray for the nation I am tired I don't have money I have small money I must still make sure in the small I have I give to offers because I must be faithful well done good and faithful servant good and good and so to be faithful means do what is expected of you first Corinthians 4 verse 2 it is it, say, it is required for every servant to be faithful not successful faithful do what you have to do and hear me it's not only to God as a Christian when you are in any institution be faithful to that institution somebody should not put you in their store and their store runs down if work is 8 be there at 7 30 be the example don't come late and say you were in the spirit come out from the spirit and go to work never use Christianity as an excuse for failure in this world no Christianity is an empowerment to do well don't be in the store and you are praying don't pray in the store in the store sell sell because he says he that is faithful in another man's own God says be faithful where you are as a student go to school on time live on time obey your parent you are faithful faithfulness to God ordained authority is faithfulness to God himself if we have service come that's faithfulness don't leave the way let's know now my life nobody your life now God in life now he give you you have to live the way you want someone say faithfulness Amen. number two you must be bold someone say bold Proverbs 28 verse 1 he said the righteous are as bold as a lion someone say boldness an ambassador must not be shake shake does it happen he, he move run move run no who art thou almighty mountain before the river bear thou shall be made play come on someone say boldness the ability to confront once you know that what you are doing agrees with scripture stand be bold when you are persecuted for righteousness be bold never said that mission abenigo they say we will not bow someone say bonus they saw fire they were threatened they said we will not bow in this world you cannot survive wickedness if you are not bold. if you are not bold you compromise any pressure you say okay okay ah god if you stand for the word god stands with you stand for righteousness be bold tell somebody be bold, be bold. and number three be wise now this part is very serious in matthew i believe 30 is it 10 is it verse 16 verse um, 16 yes jesus said be he says i send you a sheep among wolf be wise as serpents hey someone say wisdom <laughs> after you there are places you enter in some things you see stay quiet to be flippant with your mouth is to is to is to apply for tell me that me as for Kevin talk I am bold anything I say I did talk you go die something that you see huh? stay quiet what is that wisdom <laughs> I get what I'm saying be wise you know I don't say I don't uh -uh, don't talk some things you pray be wise as a wife be wise as a woman husband be wise be you must have wisdom when you are dealing with these people of the world be wise because at any instant they want to take advantage of your righteousness to cheat you say wisdom but wisdom does not mean deception does not mean wickedness does not mean compromise its ability to deal with them according to their kind yet not becoming like them you understand 
Someone say wisdom. Glory be to God. So, what are the profits or benefits of being an ambassador? I'll give you three first. Number one, preservation. Someone say I'm preserved. Shout it louder. I'll say this first. Benefits of being ambassador. Number one, preservation. John 17, 14, 15. Jesus said, keep them from the evil one. Someone say preservation. I'm saying this because no, one assurance you must have is that as an ambassador, your security is your nation's concern. Yes. You cannot die by accident. Ah, say amen now. Amen. Nothing can cut you off before your time. Amen. Say, I am an ambassador. I have preservation. Shout it louder here. Number two, provision. Luke twenty two thirty five. 35. He said, when I sent you with that press or back, lacked you anything? They said no. The second thing you enjoy as an ambassador is what? Your, the kingdom of God provides for your needs. It provides you wealth, husband, children, any resource you need to carry out the assignment is given to you. Say, I receive provision. And number three, prosperity. Shout the men to that. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Say prosperity. Why does God prosper? Because God knows through your prosperity, you can become a help to others. Say prosperity. Say, I shall never be poor. Hallelujah. Now look here. Number one, preservation. Number two, number three, stand on your feet.